Good afternoon. You're listening to Gambling with an Edge. Now here are your hosts, Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Today we're talking to Houston Curtis, a sleight of hand master who both knows how to do it and knows how to protect from it. Houston Curtis, welcome to Gambling with an Edge. Hey, guys. Bob, Richard, thanks for having me on again. It's always good to chat with you guys. I expect this to be fun. So before we start with Houston, Richard had something he wanted to talk to our audience about. Yeah, I just want our listeners to know that um, we are in the process of changing platforms. And whenever that happens, sometimes there are some bumps in the road. So um, hopefully you will continue to get the podcast in your app. If you're using an app like iTunes or Stitcher or any of those, uh, hopefully it'll be seamless, but sometimes it's not. So you can always get the show at gamblingwithanedge.com or on YouTube. Um, The other thing is in migrating over to this new platform, they could not bring over all of the episodes. So if you're looking for older episodes, you can still find those at gamblingwithanedge.com or YouTube. But they suggested that I upload the older episodes over time. Now, I don't want to deluge your feed with 50 old episodes of the podcast. So what I'm considering doing is dropping an extra episode every week. The new episodes come out on Thursday, so I'm thinking maybe on Sundays I will add one of the old episodes, and and that way you won't get bombarded with too many episodes all at once, even though I, I know most of you would just like to listen to this show 24 hours a day. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. Uh-huh. All right, Houston, Live at the Bike is a legendary name. So how are you associated with it, and how is it different than it was before? Well, uh, Live at the Bike, uh, just so everyone knows, it's the longest-running live stream uh, high-stakes cash game uh, on the planet. And I I would say about a year ago, uh, I had identified this, it was during COVID, as one of the more undervalued poker properties out there. And around that same time, I was fortunate enough to have a meeting set up with Sue Kim. Sue Kim is the gentleman who uh, is the chairman of Bally's now. And um, during COVID, he went out uh, and bought up about 15 brick and mortar casinos. And he bought the name Bally's. Uh, He attach that to all of the regional Fox sports networks, which were kind of broken up, I I believe over some kind of monopoly. So they all became Bally sports network. And then he went on to make other unique acquisitions, including uh, Gamesys out of uh, Europe, which is uh, like the largest sports betting, um, you know, tech company uh, from Europe. And you guys may know he just won the bid to build the uh, the first ever casino right in smack dab in the city of Chicago, $2 billion casino that's going to be going up in Chicago, you know, and he, he bought the Tropicana and for 300 million. And I find myself sitting uh, with him talking about uh, television because he's taking a multimedia approach to uh, what's happening, happening in, in gaming. And, uh, uh, as we were talking, I'd mentioned that I'd been looking at live at the bike and he said, well, Houston, how about I buy it for you and uh, you run it and, uh, that'll be the first way we get in business together. <laughs> Happy so, birthday. Sounds, yeah. It sounds like a good friend to have. Um, so, uh, it, does live, where is live at the bike on Twitch or does it stream on YouTube or where does it stream? Yeah. It streams both on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, and you can also go to live at the bike.com, uh, to see it. And, uh, we're running, typically we run games, uh, Wednesdays, uh, Thursdays and Fridays, and, uh, eventually we'll be adding them back to, you know, five days a week, but, um, some incredible action, 
uh, everything from uh, we, we'll play games as low, which is still high stakes, as low as twenty five fifty blinds, uh, and as high as uh, as nosebleed, you know, stakes will go. We, we've got some games coming down the pike where we'll be having you know one thousand, two thousand blinds, and you know, ridiculously high no limit stakes. Is it all no limit hold'em, or is there are there other games some nights? Uh, right now we're doing all no limit hold'em because that's what the fans want to see. Uh, a lot of players, you know, would love to do Omaha and we're, we're set up to do it with our, you know, we have a, these streams use a special RFID table, uh, that, uh, uh, eliminates the whole card cameras. So you, you have RFID chips in the cards that are, are placed, uh, in front of the players and that allows our graphics software to put the graphics on the screen, you know, so we can see that happening uh, in real time. And then we will do a delay. Right now we're doing a delay so uh, for protection purposes. Uh, so the, uh, the show is, is broadcast and for two reasons, too. Also, the delay, the commentary comes in live. The com- commentator will be commentating live to uh, speak live with the chat room. Um, but usually the game would have started like an hour previous, but it's all same day, you know, uh, live cash game, high stakes cash games. Are you the commentator? Are you at there I mean, or are you the overall uh, producer? Yeah, I, I, uh, I've commentated a couple of times, but uh, no, I'm the executive producer myself and uh, a gentleman, Rick Marr, a uh, longtime partner of mine. Uh, our executive producing the show for exclusively for Bally's under our shingle, which is a, a company called Outlaw Media Group. And uh, so we are the production company uh, assigned to the show. And, uh, you know, we got a small but mighty little team uh, that uh, are very, you know, talented guys who are steeped in poker. They live poker, uh, you know, and, uh, it's a it's a small team, but we we get it done. It's a lot of programming going on per year. You know, we're talking about you know thousand hours of programming a year on uh, you know more of like a micro budget in terms of uh, television budgets that I'm used to. Now, in a previous podcast, one of our most colorful guests of all time was a man named Lyman, who used to be, I think, involved with Live at the Bike. Is he now, or will he be in the future, or do you know? Uh, well, first of all, let me say that uh, uh, I'm a fan. So, Lyman, if you're out there listening, uh, this is coming from the executive producer at Live at the Bike. We would love to have you back anytime and uh, love to have you be a part of the show. Uh, Lyman was a, a very colorful part of Live at the Bike's past, and uh, – I'm not sure, you know, what happened uh, when he exited. I think he was doing some other things, but I know he's been uh, in touch with uh, one of our main, you know, show producers, Wayne, and uh, and some of the the guys on our on our staff. And we all love him, and would love to have him back. He's a colorful character. That's for sure. Okay, let's let's shift gears a little bit. Your background is in. Um, Sleight of hand, card manipulation. Uh, sometimes it goes into the range of cheating, and that has been your past. Now you appear to be exposing cheating and telling people how to protect themselves. Is kind of like the fox guarding the hen house. Is that a fair summarization, or was I being unfair in any way? Uh, I, I think you're probably being uh kind compared to some of the things that i (laughs) oh well let me get out my Uh, other notes (laughs) no no uh you know i um i i the first time i was uh cheated in a card game was when i truly became fascinated with understanding what was happening and uh, i had already been a fan of uh, magic and sleight of hand before that i i actually learned to my first card trick and how to play poker on the same day from my father when I was like seven years old. So the, the two have always been synonymous uh, in terms of a passion. But um, 
but it was really seeing a guy cheat at the card table that made me realize, wow, this, this guy just got away with this and no one else but me saw it. Uh, and what, what did he, what did he do? Uh, it was, uh, it was very simple. He basically, uh, they went to cut the deck and, uh, he offered the deck to the guy to his right for the cut. The guy cut the deck, and then he just simply picked up the bottom half of the deck and put it back on top uh, <laughs> instead of instead of completing the cut, you know, properly. He just reversed the way he completed the cut, and no one at the table saw it, <laughs> you know. And I didn't say anything, but I just kind of wanted to see what was going to happen after that. And sure enough, um, uh the this uh guy who uh i knew was i later found out was his partner won the big hand during during that uh <laughs> during that deal but uh so that was my first introduction and it was you know something that wouldn't fly in in uh you know very fast company but if you got um guys who aren't looking for it which pretty much includes all of today's uh young poker players you know these guys uh have no clue what's ha- what what could happen to them in a private game and um you know so i'm trying to educate them and also show them you know why uh uh you know how to run a, a square game and how to beat uh you can never beat it 100 percent, but uh how to keep the game as safe as possible and, uh, you know, there are just things that you can do that will, uh, that will keep the game on the square. And if you don't do them, you know, cheating could be running rampant. If that situation happened in a game where you were one of the players and it just so happens that you're dealt pocket aces, I assume you would fold them quickly before the flop. Is that a correct assumption or... Am I misunderstanding yeah. what's going on? Yeah, if 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 you notice shenanigans and then all of a sudden you're dealt a monster, um, you can pretty much guarantee that hand's going to show up second best by the river, you know. And this is, uh, you know, one of the old classic moves, the double duke. There's a million ways to get to it. And uh, what's interesting, guys, is these young guys, they play th- literally thousands of hours online. And they've seen every type of bad beat that you can imagine because of the amount of hands they've played. So when they get uh, a one outer spiked on them over at Jeremy's home game that somebody told them, you know, was going to be an easy clean and they should bring extra cash. uh, They're not shocked, you know, because they've seen these one outers dozens of times playing online. You know, so they they're they're not looking for, uh, you know, the the cheat. They're not looking for how something might be manipulated in a private game. Uh, And, you know, they should. (laughs) So you're running this uh, game where they the table has RFID chips in it so that you can display the cards uh, without using a whole card camera. And now this is the the. There was a big scandal in a card room in Northern Cal- California with a guy named Mike Possel, uh, where it, was this the same technology that they were using? And what happened there that he was able to get away with this? Yeah. So the, the Mike Postel situation was, was very frustrating for the uh, um, online poker streaming community um, because basically someone from the control room was feeding postal the, the whole cards, um, which is, uh, I, you know, uh, t- tears down all the integrity of, of what you're trying to do. Right. Uh, I mean, you can put as many safeguards in place as possible. Uh, but if you can't trust the people that you are working with, um, you know, there's, there's not much you can do beyond that. Uh, someone who it never came out who was feeding him whole card information. And he was like, they were about to write a book on the guy. They were calling him a legend. You know, uh, he was making reads and calls that were just, you know, 
not even humanly possible. And it didn't take long to where someone started scratching their head uh, and saying, wait a minute, you know, this, uh, this doesn't seem right. And then it got exposed. Yeah, it just seems like so many times, uh, you know, these guys who cheat, it, not only did they not want to have a losing session, they don't want to lose a hand. And it just seemed like, you know, he could have won millions and millions of dollars if, you know, if he just played it not like it it's like when you're playing blackjack and you're getting the whole card and you start doing things like hitting hard 19 against a known 20 it's yeah. just so stupid that, yeah, that well, they do it, those things that's why everyone in the know like you guys and uh you know the the Steve 40s of the world everyone took could take one look at this and know it was amateur hour right um and in look in any game uh where you have a true pro who is you know uh cheating the game or a mob of guys who are looking to score in a big game they're gonna they're looking to make a hit two times a night maybe one 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 to three times a night you know they're not looking to manipulate every hand you know they're looking to play straight up and when they pick their big spot take take down the sucker and you know, uh, which makes it even harder to spot, uh, you know, but I, I tell these guys, if you, uh, if you always do a certain deck procedure when you're shuffling, uh, and you demand that that procedure be in place and, uh, and you know, the players that you're playing with, you know, one of the biggest problems guys have is they walk into these games, they don't know a soul there. And, you know, I know guys in LA, they used to run a game where they would pay guys to come in i got paid three grand one night just to come play win or lose you know and i won 30 grand that night i you know get three grand when i'm walking out the door and i knew that like there were four other guys there that were had the same deal you know there was basically two marks at the table and uh everyone was playing to get their money and uh, the that's why these home games are so dangerous yeah, yeah, I got invited to a home game in L.A. and actually two. One of them was at the Friars Club, and the other one was at a guy's apartment. And not and again, I mean, I I played about thirty minutes before it started to stink to high heaven to me, and <laughs> told them I had stomach problems and and that I was leaving. And uh, but the the one at the um, in both of these cases. Not only did I think that someone was cheating, they had this exorbitant rake. So, you know, which yeah. <laughs> which almost stopped me from going in the first place. But they no. kept telling me how soft the games were and, you know, it wouldn't matter because you're going to win so much. Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I just thought, again, like idiots, you know, the. I, I, I have so many great stories about rake, but one of the funniest was, uh, let's put it this way. If you're sitting there at the table and you look around and you realize that nobody is winning, <laughs> that might be a sign they're hitting the rake just a little too hard. But I was in a game where that happened. I looked around and I was like, holy shit, everybody is stuck. There's not one winner at the table, <laughs> you know, and I was a partner in this game. And I said to the other guy who was, you know, telling the dealer to hit it hard. I was like, dude, you need to slow down on the rake. Everyone is stuck. You know, if somebody notices it's going to look bad, you know, uh, and that's how these home games are. You know, first of all, it should be pointed out that it's illegal to uh, rake um, these games, right? Uh, that's why when I played in the big game that I had for years with Toby, it was never, um, never raked. Uh, it was all, you know, on the up and up. And, uh, there are games running all over LA and New York and, you know, every major city in the country where they're raking these pots in high stakes cash games. Uh, and it's, you know, it's not really, uh, it's not something the police are out there like looking for, but, now you take a heavy handed rake and you add uh, a couple of uh, cold decks, you know, and a few, uh, 
you know, a few short shuffles and second deals. And <laughs> next thing you know, you've got a nice little uh, crime enterprise going on, you know. In Houston, Texas, as opposed to Houston, Curtis, there was a <laughs> shuffle master scandal of some sort. Do you know anything mm -hmm. about that? Well, I, uh, I, you know, I had been, um, I'd gotten some calls early on when the, the Texas card rooms took off and I knew it was the wild west down there. One insider whose name I won't reveal, uh, told me that, uh, guys were showing up with their own decks of cards, dealers showing up to these places with their own decks of cards. If you can imagine that. That might and be a so, sign. Yeah, there might be a sign, you know, shenanigans. Um, yeah, I, I keep my deck in a shoulder holster. Right? You know, just... right? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's definitely not good when the dealers are bringing their own decks. And that's why people were trying to get me down there. Like, you got to come down here. And I'm like, no, I'm, I, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, part of my past, not my, not my future. You know, once you... Once you come out and start talking about, uh, you know, being an expert in these moves, you, that means you've made that decision to to leave that part of your life behind. Right. Um, and uh, uh, the the thing that happened recently with the Shuffle Master is, um, you know, I, I got some inside info on that. I knew how the Shuffle Master scheme was going to work a year or so ago because I was told by, you know, some guys who knew about a mob that was trying to put it together, you know, three, four guys. And uh, there's different ways that you can control these shuffle masters. And, you know, Steve Forty and I've had, you know, long conversations about them. Um, some of the stuff he could tell you just, you know, make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. But, but the simple thing that they were doing in Texas is that I, I got confirmation on uh, is that, uh, they had a guy in a car, guy outside the casino. They've rigged the machine where there's a wire signal sent out from the machine to the guy in the car. All right, well, that's because know, they've they've built a camera into it that can see the order of the cards, right? Well, there was already a camera built into it um, because that is how it knows that you haven't swap, swapped out a card. You know, it... Uh, the shuffle master already in this particular model already had the camera built in it. So they tap into that camera and they send that signal to the guy in the car. And then they know they're playing, say like eight handed, no limit hold'em. So they know what the game is and he has a, um, uh, some software and all he really does. The one thing that you don't know is what happens after the cut, right? So the deck comes out of the shuffle master and now you have to cut it to the cut card which basically, you know, uh, doesn't really change the order. Uh, it just changes where the start of that order is. So, uh, it's, so as soon as the guy in the car has the information, uh, the guy who say there's three guys that are playing as a team, uh, guy in seat, you know, in the first seat gets dealt, uh, his first card, first card is say a six of spades. He sends that information back to the guy in the car, the guy in the car can now put that into an algorithm and it will tell him uh, the top three hands at the table. They just kept it simple, you know, so they know that first the best hand is at seat seven, second best seat five, third best is, at, you know, seat one. And they send that information back to, to, the, to the guys who are teamed up. And as you can imagine, with such information, it becomes impossible for them to lose. And that's well, yeah. If, if if you bet big when you know you're going to win the hand, and you kind of don't make a call on a river when you know you're not, I could beat that game. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they, you know, they basically get, uh, uh, you know, guys sandwiched in, and you know, one guy will be the action player, and he'll be providing action, you know, all night. And so whenever the guy uh, who has second best is a mark. Um, the, the action player is going to be putting money in the marks going to, you know, put a bunch of dough in. And then, uh, our guy, our man with the best hand is going to come over the top and take it all, you know, and that's, that's how they do it. Uh, but there's an easy way to safeguard against it. And it's, it's very simple. 
against this particular scam, all you have to do is when that when that deck comes out of the shuffle master, you just give it one table riffle shuffle before you go to the cut card. If you do that, then their complete enterprise is thwarted. You know, it messes up everything that they're trying to do because now the order is truly mixed, you know, and uh, they do not have any point of reference uh, to to gain the edge. You understand what I'm saying? I do, but um, do these have a, a constant dealer or does a dealer rotate? On these games, in uh, Texas. well, in these games, there's rotating dealers, but when the shuffle master is compromised, it doesn't really matter, you know, because uh, the, if they're not doing uh, adding a riffle shuffle before they go to the cut card, um, they're just pulling the deck out of the shuffle master, going to the cut card, and that's when you know the guy outside has his information, and as soon as he knows what the first card dealt to his partner is, he can he can get access to, you know, shoot back the information telling him what hands are the winning hands, the one, two, and three winning hands. And he only needs that information once or twice a night to do really well. Exactly. You know, and they may be doing it more than that. uh, But, uh, you know, the smart guys are going to, you know, look, there's other, there's other things that, you know, Steve 40 would be able to speak more to, um, but you know, I have talked to Steve and there is ways that these shuffle masters can stack, can be rigged to stack to cold deck people, you know, that's even more sophisticated than the method that's being used in Chicago. So, um, again, you know, one thing you can't do is you can't beat, uh, unless, unless you are, uh, dealing with a mechanic, uh, which could easily be the case. You can't beat a riffle shuffle after you come out of the uh, out of the shuffle master uh, to to gain that same edge. So, provided that the dealer isn't in on it, um, that is the solution. And I would All say right. that the shuffle master is still far more protective uh, than any other form, you know, than than a human uh, shuffler. And it also gets off more hands per hour, so it's better for the players, and it's better for the casino. All right, we're talking to Houston Curtis. We have a lot more to talk about, including a upcoming book and some videos he's creating. But first, we need to stop for some commercials. The South Point has more than 10,000 games, returning at least 99%. This is more such games than anyone else has. Throughout July... There's a $650,000 Summer Money Madness promotion, which means there will be two simultaneous casino-wide progressives going on that can be won at any machine where a player's card was inserted and at least $1 was played in the previous minute. The larger progressive starts at $10,000 and must hit by $25,000. All active players not hitting the progressive receive $25 in free play. The smaller progressive ranges between one thousand dollars and twenty five hundred, and it's expected to go off about three times a day. If you're serious about card counting, the Blackjack Apprenticeship membership is a great way to learn, train, network, and get the resources you need to succeed. We've had quite a few guests on Gambling with an Edge who exclusively trained and got their start through Blackjack Apprenticeship. Check out the website at blackjackapprenticeship.com. They have member forums, training software, and guides to help you learn. So that's blackjackapprenticeship.com, and you will find a link in the show notes. Videopoker.com is the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, this allows you to get correction on most of the game. It also tells you how much each game is worth. So... If you're practicing a, um, a bonus poker version of something within the videopoker.com arsenal, it will let you know, like Quick Quads or several of the others. And so it gives you the information about how much the game is worth, and that's valuable information. The game of the week is Super Triple Play Jackpots. It's a game for those who wish to gamble. It requires seven coins per line. 
where the first extra coin bumps up all the values for four of a kind. The second extra coin provides you with a wheel spin whenever you end up with a four of a kind. Since these quads only come around every 420 hands or so, it's a heaven or hell experience. If you don't get many quads today, you will not like this game. If you do, you will. If you come across a super triple play jackpot and don't know the return, you can enter into regular video poker software and it will come out to be a 130% game or so. You then take that number, multiply by five and divide by seven, and that will give you the actual return. All right, we're talking to Houston Curtis. You create okay. videos, Houston. Uh, what, what type of information can people get on these videos and where can they find them? Uh, thank you. Well, in, you know, in addition to executive, being executive producer of Live at the Bike, I have a little site called cardsharp.com, cardsharp with a K, or you could just go to the Cardsharp YouTube channel, uh, where I teach um, poker protection methods uh, for players who are interested in protecting themselves or gaining knowledge about how they would get cheated in a card game. Uh, and it's also kind of a fan favorite site for the insider magician who's looking to um, get sharper on their gambling moves. Uh, and I haven't I haven't posted a lot of videos in a while, as Richard would attest to when he saw me on Joe Ingram the other day. <laughs> I was my hands were pretty cold, uh, but but with about a week's with with about a week's worth of practice, Richard, I, I would have been blinding. I promise you. You know, it just occurred to me, um, have you had, there was a site called cardsharp.com with a K like 20, 25 years ago, um, oh, wow. that, yeah. Okay. So that wasn't you, you haven't had it no. that long. Okay. No, Cause it was, it was actually a members only site. You had to register and get a password and, um, you know, it was for, basically right. gambling sleight of hand stuff um right so yeah huh. no that, that there is another forum like that that's hard to get into uh can't think of the name of it right now but it's basically a bunch of magicians but there's a whole section of it that is dedicated to to sharps you, is you it the magic cafe about. yes that's yeah, it. yeah, and yeah. I'm, a, I'm a member of that and you know there's some guys uh who've got a hold of me through there like uh the guy Doc out of New York, uh, who does all of the, um, he's a great deck switcher, you know, uh, uh, Steve Forty used to joke, uh, he said, uh, well, I'm not going to repeat, I'll repeat it off there. <laughs> <in terms laughs> that. But it was, it was compliment. Of, What's that? I've never heard of this particular Doc, but I do know that I'm not supposed to play poker with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, he plays more street games, you know. He's a African American guy from. Uh, he comes straight out. He's like, "I'm a criminal. I'm a criminal." <laughs> <laughs> but he, he started getting a hold of me. Uh, uh, just to, I, I get a random phone call from him one night, and he, he's like, "You're the real deal. I, I just want to talk." <laughs> we ended up talking about, you know, cold decking for like an hour. It was pretty fun. Uh, but so my site teaches, uh, you know, uh, strategies on poker protection and sleight of hand. And, uh, and eventually there'll probably be, um, there might be like a, a, a pay area, you know, where I, I do more demonstrations on how to protect your game. And then if you want to learn things beyond that, you know, um, which is knowledge that, you know, takes many, many thousands of hours to, uh, uh, of practice to to get right so just giving it away on youtube seems kind of weird but those who were really uh, have a you know um an aspiration to learn more about this would be able to you know maybe sign up or, or get some paid videos as well if somebody wanted to learn how to cheat would this be a good resource <laughs> um First of all, I uh, strongly, uh, I'm, I'm adamantly and strongly against cheating. I would say that any resource that is going to be the best resource in teaching you how to spot a cheat 
would unfortunately also be a great resource to learn how to be a cheat, you know? Um, so you could either take the knowledge and use it uh, for good uh, in to protect your game or, or to protect yourself in the games that you play in, or you could take uh, that knowledge and, um, you know, go be a, uh, uh, a criminal, which I, I highly uh, suggest you do not do, especially if you plan on coming anywhere near a game that I'm involved with. <laughs> Actually, what would happen if you uh, spotted somebody trying to cheat in a game at you know live at the bike? How would they? I don't know. Would you call the police or would you? How how? What do you do? <clears throat> well, as you as you guys know, um, anytime cheating, uh, even at the highest levels, is spotted in these situations. There's, there's very little that has ever been done. I'm not saying that can't be done, but there's very little that tends to get done um, from a legal standpoint. That's not always the case. We know what happened with, uh, with Phil Ivey. If it, you know, with Phil, that was, he had a great argument that he was, you know, it was an advantage play when he was playing the turn. And, yeah, yeah, you know, that wasn't cheating. I mean... But but we know what happened with Archie Karras, right? Right. I mean, but, but but the casino said it was cheating, right? And uh, and then and they didn't pay him. So that was one scenario where, you know, yes, what would you do? The the main thing that I do is I try and make sure that uh, uh, I try and safe the safeguard the game from the outset by knowing that all the money, first of all, is clean money. There are a lot of games where guys come in, you don't know where their money's coming from. And these casinos, they don't want that, especially these California card rooms. They've had situations in the past where, you know, turns out they had some high roller come in and he was trying to launder dirty money. And poker and gambling is an easy way to, to do that, always has been. Um, so we demand that we know where the money's coming from. You know, and often we have these guys wire money to the cage. And, uh, and I know that, uh, you know, at least at the, the, the bicycle casino where live at the bike is shot, they have uh, limits on how much someone can with, uh, can cash in with cash, you know, to, so that it, it limits the amount of dirty cash <laughs> that could, that could flow th into the casino. So when you eliminate dirty money, you also eliminate a big portion of the guys who are going to uh, try and take, uh, some type of, a. Uh, uh, a shot at cheating in the game, you know, and then the things that we have to look out for, we have a security guard standing outside of our door at the control room. We, we run the game on a delay. Uh, no one, uh, all of the telephones are collected from all of the players uh, before the game starts and put into a lockbox. And all of the telephones are collected in the control room from anyone who's in, in the control room and put into a lockbox and all social media is shut down and turned off in the control room. And we also have two cameras from the eye in the sky from the casino shooting into our control room. So we take many, many measures, including having the, the decks of cards, the RFID decks stored, not with the production, but only with the casino. The casino has to bring them out for us. The casino takes them back. So any game that is, you know, I've heard of these games where the producer uh, running the game is taking the cards home with them. That would never happen in in uh, our game. That's, that's well, but I, I've also heard of games where the card room manager, uh, you know, is maybe whacked up some cards. Uh, you know, of in... course, there's there's always going to be that risk. So, you know, uh, beyond. But how do you how, what how do you choose who the players are going to be? I mean, what, do, what if a guy contacts you and says, "Hey, I want to play in the game. I want to be on TV." How how do you decide well, who gets to play? We're looking for guys who are going to uh, just in terms of gameplay. You know, we don't go into this. Uh, you know, I put all these these cheating safeguards in place so we don't have to think about that as our first. You know, is the first thing you think about when you meet a new player. I, I give everyone the benefit of the doubt, right? 
um, and then put methods in place that will help me figure out if uh, if I'm making a mistake with with a, with a player or if a player is trying to cheat. But giving them the benefit of the doubt, how we look at players is we want people who are, uh, you know, willing to play uh, high stakes, who have uh, clean money to play, and uh, they would, in the most cases, be uh, have a high. You're familiar with the term VPIP. Uh, it's a term being used now uh, in live stream poker, and it basically means um, voluntarily put in pot. So it's an it's a it's a uh, nice way of saying we're looking for guys who are going to play a lot of action. You know, a guy who's <laughs> going to have above a fifty percent V pip. So it means he's playing over fifty percent of the hands. You know, and when Don't you have hits. that versus, <laughs> right. Yeah, when you have that versus a guy who, you know, is playing 10% of the hands, guess who's going to get the invite back? You know, it's the guy yeah. who's involved, whether he's winning or losing, you know, we want action players. And it also takes, uh, you know, I think some of the better players uh, who play a high uh, amount of hands, those, and win, those are the really, like, you know, talented poker players that I enjoy uh, watching. And, and, uh, and I think some of these, you know, young guys out there watching, they aspire to play like those guys to be able to be involved in a lot of pots and know how to, and still know how to win. Yeah. Well, if you're shooting live, you don't have the luxury of like uh, poker after dark or those where they get to edit out the boring hands. Right. So, you want you and you, you know I'm sure you want players who are entertaining. Hence, you inviting Lyman back. Uh, you know I'm Absolutely. sure he's he's yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, all the guys that are fun to watch are, are guys who are uh, you know they're involved. They're involved in the conversation. They're involved in the game. They're splashing a lot. You know, and I, if they're great, that's fine. The other thing is, you know, you don't want a guy who's going to smash all of the. Um, you know, the quote unquote recreational players. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you make exceptions. Like we had this guy who came on the show, his name is limitless. Um, and he was actually, uh, referred to me, uh, Bob, by, uh, my good friend, Dave garden, who you and I chatted about, uh, Dave plays in some of the biggest high stakes cash games played with me for years in, in high stakes cash games. And, I was wanting Dave to come on and play. And, and he said he will eventually he's taken, he, he, he's very private, but he said, but in the, in the meantime, while I'm thinking about it, you should bring this guy limitless on this, this kid's a young kid from uh, Poland and plays every hand, you know, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, he ended up winning, you know, six figures in the game, but he'll also go off for six figures, you know, and smile when he's paying you or smile when he's collecting. He's just fun to watch. And he is dangerous. You know, he's a very dangerous player. He makes moves that, you know, uh, a lot of people aren't going to make. And what's great about live um, poker and these live streams is the people who watch it, you know, they really study and the players who play it, they go back and they study these, these games. They have all every hand of information. And there are guys who've become live stream specialists, you know, who uh, uh, use that method. They go in, they play, they learn the players, they study the tapes, uh, you know, very closely. And then they go back armed with information based on, you know, what they saw. Uh, And there's some guys who have made a great living doing it. But when you're producing a thousand hours a year, there's, it's hard to, watch all of that all the time the um yeah it is the one guys that we count on are the commentators um you know i i will watch uh as much as i can and uh but say you're doing a four or five hour live stream the commentators are hand stamping all of the big moments uh as they commentate uh, and and you know call out the action so we have track of the big hands and then we'll do releases of special videos of our hot hands of the night and, you know, big bluffs and bad beats. And so we're able to take the four hours, five hours of live content and then cut it down 
to little nuggets that we release that do very well in terms of being individual videos. All right. Um, Anthony Curtis was our guest not long ago, and he mentioned your name as writing a book that's going to come out in Huntington Press. Um, have you heard of this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. And uh, I love Anthony. Anthony Curtis, no relation, even though I would call him a brother. Um, but uh, we've been talking about this book for some time now, and it's finally, uh, you know, we're 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 getting uh, uh, into the uh, the real <laughs> release date world. So uh, we should have a release date coming out, you know, uh, soon. But the book is called Million Dollar Mechanics, and it's kind of a treatise of um, uh, poker protection and cheating methods uh, to that I know throughout my career. Um, and it specifically will relate to poker um, primarily as opposed to, uh, you know, sleight of hand that may be used in other other games like blackjack or, or, or baccarat or something like that. And, uh, it should be, uh, you know, I think this will be a very, um, good guide for the modern, um, poker player to learn about modern pro poker protection. What is, what to look out for in today's poker world. And, uh, it'll also have a full chapter on, uh, um, on live stream poker and, and those protection methods, uh, as well as all the traditional stuff, uh, you know, how, how, you know, a bottom deal, uh, gets used in a game and, and false shuffling, false cutting, nullifying the cut, all of these things will all be in this book, uh, in hopefully a very, uh, fun and, and exciting, you know, uh, read, uh, cause I'll share some of my stories that throughout my life that, uh, I've gone through along the way uh, as I explain some of these moves that get used. Now, Steve Forty, a, a few years before you, did similar things to what you were doing. Do you have any relationship with Steve? Uh, I do, and Steve and I are uh, good friends. He is, in my opinion, the best there is uh, uh, alive. And... Uh, uh, just an amazing person. Uh, his knowledge base is so deep. Um, it, it just blows me away. The things that this man knows about not just, uh, you know, poker or blackjack, but just gambling in general. And, um, you know, I, 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 uh, I admire him very much. And, uh, I think, uh, you know, I think Steve is, a, is also a fan of mine and, and I predict that, uh, you know, he'll have some, some nice things to say about my book when it comes out. Um, we've spent many hours sitting with each other, showing each other moves and, and, uh, you know, just, uh, chewing the fat in terms of, uh, uh, gambling sleight of hand and his latest books, gambling sleight of hand that are written more for the, you know, the magician are just incredible. Just, uh, he sent me, uh, two copies, he sent me a copy of both books you know, with wonderful signature. And then I had showed him, I'd been marking up one of the books with a highlighter. And he's like, you know, a lot of guys would say that's sacrilege. So he sent me two more. He said, don't mark in these, just keep those on the shelf. <laughs> I thought that was very cool. He has, uh, like, he has a new book coming out um, soon on uh, gambling collectibles. So, yeah. you know, he had a, an enormous collection of uh, gambling stuff that, he photographed all of it before getting rid of it. So I'll tell you uh, an amazing quick story that happened recently with Steve. Cause you know, he, he claims, you know, he's getting older. His eyesight isn't what it used to be and so on and so forth, which, you know, I, I'm sure, um, you know, is, is the case. I can't imagine him when he was like at his 100% sharpest level, but uh, we were talking about the Phil Ivy thing. And I know that he consulted uh, with, with Phil during that time. Um, in terms of the edge sorting and, uh, uh, and he was talking to me about deck inconsistencies and I always have decks of cards on me and he's like, do you have a deck on you? And I just happened to have a, a brand new deck of B playing cards that were wrapped, you know, in the box. 
and he's like, okay, unwrap them. So uh, I take out this brand new deck of cards and I give him a shuffle. Uh, he said, told me to shuffle them up and I shuffle them up. And then he starts going through the cards, just looking at the backs of the cards and he's separating them into two piles. And he's just looking at the backs of the cards on a brand new deck that I had just opened and shuffled. And by the time he was done, he had all the high value cards on the right side and all the other cards on the left side. It was unbelievable, uh, you know, that he, he was able to do that out of a, off a brand new deck that I had just pulled, you know, just opened. Um, but proof that uh, these inconsistencies in the cards are real. And he was like, I would say 98% accurate. There might have been a couple that were off, but pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. And that was the B decks were cut on clearly. This was edge sorting. Is that what this was? Yeah, it was an edge sorting. Uh, he was showing me how edge sorting can can uh, help uh, in terms of finding high value cards. And he showed me a real <laughs> world application right in front of my eyes with a deck that I owned. You know, uh, and this is all, obviously it's a uh, a borderless deck. And uh, they look for the edges uh, on, on the borders and how they're cut. And when they're cut in the sheet, um, you know, because of the way the cards fall, uh, he's able to somehow find, uh, and I didn't get into learning it, um, but he's, a, he, he's been able to, to find where the inconsistency starts and make his decisions based on that. It's pretty, I think that's how he's doing it. You know, it's, it's it's pretty incredible though um you know but this is also a guy who can you know dice slide and you know he can do a bunch of incredible things uh, all right we enjoyed talking to houston curtis hope to have him back when his book comes out maybe before be happy to come back well good at the end of our show we have a recommended section where our hosts and our sometimes our guests tell us about something they think our audience would like. Richard, do you have a recommended for us today? Yeah, my recommended this week is a new show that just totally captured me. It's called The Old Man. It is on uh, FX, and uh, I, I believe it's also on Hulu. And it stars uh, Jeff Bridges and John Lithgow. And admittedly, this is exactly my kind of show. Um, you know, Jeff Bridges is basically an old man who's one of these ex-CIA kind of Superman type guys who now he's old. And he's been kind of under underground, hidden out for 30 years. And now all of a sudden people are after him again. And um, so, you know, it's an action suspense show. It's just so well written. And the, the fight scenes are incredible. As somebody who has filmed a fight scene or two or, or a hundred, uh, I, I was just blown away by how good the fight scenes are um, in this show. So anyway, uh, if that sounds like your kind of show, it's called The Old Man and it's on FX and Hulu. I was actually talking about that with um, some uh, people, uh, actually Richard knows, and they said that uh, while Jeff is in his uh, early 70s now, he did some of his own stunt work on the fight scenes, which was it's an amazing that a 73-year-old man would, uh, would grapple uh, on camera <laughs> rather than have a, a stunt double do it. I'm in that age and I wouldn't, but then I've never been asked to. <laughs> My recommended is how to tell a story by the moth. The moth is an organization that holds storytelling competitions and also holds seminars, teaching people how to tell true narrative stories, not only competitive stories, but things such as eulogies, toasts, adding stories to things such as job interview, dates, and other social events. Simply put, being able to tell a story well is a useful tool to have in your quiver. And it's a whole lot more than this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. It is a how-to book, 
told by people whose job it is to help storytellers prepare a story. It goes over what works and what doesn't work. Now, I'm an experienced storyteller, and Richard is even more so. But I picked up several things from the book, and I'm sure people without such a background will pick up more. I especially recommend the audiobook version of, of the book. Here you hear hundreds of excerpts from moth stories on stage told to illustrate various points. Now, more than half are American or Canadian accent with various regional ex, uh, differences, but there's a lot of storytellers from Africa and Asia and uh, South America and various other places. Don't think there are any from Antarctica, I'm not sure. And, uh, and they tell their stories. Some have significant handicaps and they tell their true stories. And it's very powerful and you hear these um, on the audiobook. Plus, there's about 15 different hosts who, um, who read various parts of the book and you miss the differences in the host voices when you just read the book. Houston Curtis, do you well, have both a of those? I, I do. Uh, first of all, both of those are great suggestions. I'm definitely watching that show and definitely checking out uh, this audio book. Um, I'll be a little self-serving uh, and, and say I would highly, I think this is the right audience, I would highly recommend Anyone who has uh, even the smallest interest in um, cash game poker, if you have not watched Live at the Bike, uh, go to liveatthebike.com. And what's great about uh, the show is you really get to be a fly on the wall in a real high stakes poker game. You know, uh, this isn't, you know, like uh, watching a final table uh, where, you know, all of the big hands have been cut together. Uh, there, there are these moments, these, you know, nuanced moments that, uh, you know, they, there might be folding, but these players are, they play heavy, heavy action. And a lot of people have learned and become a much better poker player after watching live at the bike. And you will have people, uh, big time players who, uh, if you ask them, they'll tell you they religiously watch it and how much it has helped their game. So watch it to be entertained by huge pots. Everyone loves to see great big pots and huge action, uh, but also watch it uh, to improve your own uh, cash game. And uh, who knows, maybe one day you will be playing for uh, with a million dollars on the table at live at the bike. And that is my recommendation. And thank you guys for having me today. Well, I do hope it's true that I'm not at that table. Uh, those players would send a private airplane to come get me, I'm sure. Uh, thank you, Houston Curtis. Thank you, Richard. Go out and hit lots of royal flushes, everybody. Good day.